Welcome to the October 27th. Be recorded. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the October 27th, 2020 Tonino City Council meeting. Let the record show that all council, all seated uh, council members are present. Uh, we have one vacancy, uh, so that's noted. Uh, please stand for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, everybody. We have an agenda before us uh, needing approval. No approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, approval of minutes for the October 13th, 2020 regular meeting of the Tonino City Council. No approval. Second. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the minutes as presented. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, brings us to the consent calendar. We have payroll EFTs in the amount of $19,064.68. Claims checks number 29420 through 29447 and other EFTs in the amount of $46,679.19 for a grand total of $65,743.87. Uh, we have no liquor or cannabis license renewals. We have a motion to approve the consent calendar. So moved. Second. Second. It has been moved in a, and seconded to approve the consent calendar. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. That brings us to public comments. If there is anyone in the audience tonight that would like to provide public comment, uh, please come forward at this time. Unmute your microphone. Let me know. You'll be given three minutes. Uh, we ask that you state your name and address. Again, if there is anyone that would like to provide public comment, now is your time to do so. Going once, going twice, moving on. That brings us to our public hearing. Thurston County has provided initial guidance for the computation of ad valorem taxes for 2021. Because the implicit price deflator did not exceed 1%, the Department of Revenue is limiting ad valorem tax increases in cities with less than 10,000 residents to a maximum of 101% of the last year's levy. In other words, the city may only increase its ad valorem tax levy by a maximum of 1% using regularly levied computation procedures. However, the regular levy procedure will resort in a, result in an increase of $7,921, which would cause the city to implement the extreme cost saving measures. Use of the highest lawful levy procedures would allow a more substantial increase in revenues while remaining within the bounds of state law and would cause a far less disruption to city operations. Uh, so this is a public hearing. Do we have the public hearing procedures for me to read? Uh, I, I do not. I apologize. I didn't get those in here. Yeah, I do not have them memorized. Uh, at this time, we're going to open a public hearing to the public. Uh, I will introduce Mr. John Millard, the city clerk treasurer, to present information. And at that point, we will hold a public hearing. Uh, I ask the council members uh, refrain from commenting until the end, at which point they could ask questions. Uh, but this is for the public again, so it is a public hearing. All right, at this time, I would like to invite the public to comment on the proposed uh, tax, ad valorem tax measures. Again, if there is any member of the public that would like to participate in the public hearing regarding the ad valorem tax measures, please step forward.
We have no action. This public hearing is closed. Do we have any comments from the council? Well, let's just go ahead and remind everybody that is that's potentially watching that this is basically just housekeeping. We have never gone beyond the one percent, uh, and I've been here since '96. Thank you. All right, at this time, I'd like to close the public hearing, uh, and here we go. Thank you. I skipped over John, but I, I read your bit. So, proclamations. We have none. Old business. The administration seeks council to approve approval to enter a fee agreement between Ruiz and Smart and the city to represent the city on a contingent basis if required. We're asking that a motion be made to authorize Mayor Fournier to enter a contingency fee agreement with Ruiz and Smart. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to authorize the mayor to enter into the contingency fee agreement. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes, thank you. <clears throat> uh, at this point, we'd like to discuss the vacancy of uh, council position, uh, I wanna say number two? Uh, which was vacated by council member David Watterson. Uh, I, I think you guys may have discussed it a little. Uh, we, we have a, a fairly straightforward procedure that we're not asking or not suggesting we deviate from. Uh, the, the administration intends to place an announcement in the, the paper of record and on our website that a vacancy has occurred uh, and we will be accepting applications for eligible citizens. At that point, uh, we'll give it probably three weeks. Uh, the applications that we receive will re be reviewed by a committee of myself, uh, Linda Godovac. We can have one other council member. And, uh, and we will review the applicants. And uh, at that point, if there is a, a clear preference for an applicant based on the, the applications, we may make a recommendation to council for confirmation at that point. Uh, if, if we're looking for further information beyond the applications, we could open it up for maybe some interviews, uh, some Zoom interviews, kind of just depends on how much of an applicant pool we get. And at that point, we would, uh, based on that information, make a recommendation for confirmation of council. I would anticipate uh, maybe the last weekend, in, the last meeting in November, or well, probably the first meeting in December to have uh, an applicant for you guys to consider. Is there any discussion or thoughts or questions or concerns about a process like that? Nope. Nope. Okay. Uh, do we have any council members? And we, we need one more. We can't have any more than that one more. Well, what is a, is, yeah. What time of the day are you gonna yeah. be doing this? It, we don't have anything set, but can we, I mean, how many council members we have? We have, we have four. five now, we have four now, so two would be a quorum. So we, it's, it'll be Linda and I, and we will, uh, maybe we'll bring in a citizen. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we'll, yeah, so we'll just, we can't have any more than two, and we'll, we'll stick to that. I hope that that doesn't offend anybody or hurt anybody's feelings. No. Okay. I'm hurt, but I'm right. over it. Sorry, Jason. Over it, Jason. <laughs> He's over it already. All right, next subject. At the October 13, 2020 regular city council meeting, this issue was discussed but tabled in favor of making a more informative, uh, more information available for deciding upon which project the city would execute using the 153000 in RCSP funds. The cost per linear foot of sidewalks in the downtown business district is approximately $50 per foot. Of the two projects put forth in for decision, phase one includes sidewalks on the east side of Hodgson Street, and the total price is estimated at $148,000. Phase two project does include 235 linear feet of sidewalks, and the total price is estimated at $240,670. Uh, Mr. Millard, do you have any comments before we open this up for discussion? Uh, 
I don't know about comments, but I'm going to go uh, and uh, to the place in the. So you, uh, I'm speaking to the council now, ladies and gentlemen. You saw this last month, and uh, the question I couldn't answer for you at the time was the question of sidewalks. Um, so they, unfortunately, they called this phase one and they called this phase two, but this is really a possible project and this is another possible project. And if you l look at how they built the budget for what they have labeled as phase two, uh, that project itself could consist of multiple phases. Uh, the answer to the specific question that was asked is how much do sidewalks cost uh, per linear foot? And the answer is 50 bucks. Uh, so I, I probably did a poor job of explaining this last time. So this project um, would see a repaving of the middle of the street. It would see a paving of a parking area uh, closest to the post office. And on the other side of the street, it would see uh, a little bit more pavement and then an actual sidewalk uh, where it connects down here to the intersection of um, Sussex and Hodgden. And you, you saw the price for that, it was 148,000. That's a complete project. And then if you go over here and look at what they label phase two, but it is more appropriately thought of, of just a different project that we could execute. What I was told is that the way this picture is showing it, each of these four corners would would get a uh, the 25 feet of sidewalk, so there's 100 feet, and then another 150 feet s somewhere uh, along both sides. How, however, we wind up doing it, and then the reason I uh, took care to explain that this could be viewed as multiple phases in and of itself is because the four corners here uh, wouldn't be much of a project if you didn't do that. So you you could do that. But this center island uh, could be executed at a later date. That would save some money here. And these crossing beacons could also be saved for a later date to save some money. The price for what they're showing us here is 240000 But But if you don't do this center island and if you don't do those flashing lights, um, it drops the price down more like 185000 and that means $30,000 of the city's money would be required to finish that project. And that includes uh, 250 feet of sidewalk, but I, I don't know where on this illustration that sidewalk would go. And so what we're asking you to do for us tonight is give us uh, some definitive guidance. Do you wanna do just this project? Do you wanna do this project? And if you wanna do this project, do you want to do some of it or all of it? Do you want to do both projects? Realizing, of course, that um, the amount of the grant is only 153,000. So this particular project here all fits within the grant parameters as is. Uh, this project as is exceeds the grant parameters, uh, but there are things that you could do to bring the cost down. So it, it's really, you know, a council decision about which thing we want to pursue and when. If, if you want to pursue them both, it's, it's going to be a more protracted process. Uh, also keep in mind that regardless of which projects you choose, uh, the money is going to come in, in the course of two years. So year number one or next year would probably be the design phase. And then year number two, 2022, would be actual construction. Uh, Pending that, Mr. Mayor, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, thank you, John. Uh, so we, you know, we we have we have two projects, and both need to be done. I think that's clear. They're both uh, very worthy projects. Um, you know, before you guys discuss the merits and and what direction you want to go, I think it's important to remember that we, you know, of the two projects, we have we have one that fits within the grant budget. You know, so we have one that's for $148,000 and we have a $153,000 grant. So that one, it's easy. 
right? The city wouldn't have to come up with money. Uh, we talked about being in a lean year where we're not going to be putting out money for things. Uh, so I want you to keep that in mind uh, when you're weighing the pros and cons of these. But that, you know, the phase two project, it, 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 it's worthy of doing. The phase one project, an, another thing where the kind of, you know, I think should come into factor is uh, the building owner, Bob, uh, is is putting a lot of money and a lot of effort into a, a block of town that has been long neglected and looks has, has looked kind of like an eyesore. And so we've got an effort to kind of spread out our commercial activity and our downtown core. And we have an opportunity to uh, kind of embrace him and wrap our, our little sidewalk arms around uh, his efforts and, and really kind of help help them uh, you know, expand our commercial, our commercial area. So, you know, I, I think that those are, those are important, but that being said, uh, I'd like to open it up for discussion. Is there any thoughts or comments or questions? Yes. yes. Uh, maybe we didn't, uh, maybe we didn't explain it well enough at the last uh, time we looked at all of this stuff. Uh, if we can only choose these two, I, I would pr prefer project one, but we were talking about putting sidewalks along the business district, you know, from uh, possibly uh, the independent coming into into uh, town. Is that was that taken off the table? It wasn't so much how much would it cost, or would how, how much would it cost to do sidewalks in front of those businesses. That's a, that's another project that we've been hoping something would happen for years as well. Well, that that is part of the phase two uh, project scope. It was it was going in uh, how many feet on there, John? The project uh, is 235 feet of sidewalks. Uh, what I don't know is where's that 230. Aside from these 25 foot chunks uh, behind the what is that purple? Um, along the bulb each, yeah, it, along each bulb out. So there's a hundred of the 235 feet. I have no idea where the other 135 feet is. It makes sense to me uh, that it would extend east and west along the one, one or the other or both sides of Sussex. But, um, you know, over and above this, what, what, you know, over and above the picture that you're looking at would be $50 a linear foot. And how long is the that sidewalk from corner to corner? Because this is not showing it's from corner to corner. It's just showing 25 feet. Roger, I don't have those distances. I, you know, it's a full city block, however long that is. You know, city blocks, depending on where you are, are different. Like I said, uh, that's that's what I thought we were talking about, getting numbers on that, what it would take to do the city block on both sides instead of these bowl bouts. Because these bowl bouts here aren't near as important as making sure that as people are starting to walk down these sidewalks here, when we can finally get out again, that nobody, that uh, the sidewalks are actually in decent condition. All right, if we're, if we're just talking about sidewalks in and their condition, they're not, I mean, yes, they need help, but they're, they're, they're not horrible. I know, I know that, you know, there, there's cracks and we do need to get to them. And we do need to fix them, but I, you know, I, I don't know. What up, Linda, you're, this is something that is close to you. What are your thoughts on all this? Now you know how I feel about it. I want the sidewalks fixed. I want them, you know, I think that is very, very, very important. Yes, the safety of the people going across the street is even more important than that. But those sidewalks are really in bad shape and they really do need, if we're going to have any kind of aesthetic looking uh, uh, facade in downtown Tonino, we have got to have decent looking sidewalks and, and it, it Right now, they just don't look that way. So you know how I feel about it, you know? Mm -hmm. That's the way I feel. Maybe there's other money out there. Maybe we can get other money to do the sidewalks. I don't know. But that's how I feel about it, so. Jason, Rachel, 
Yeah, I was going to say, ever since I've been on cancel here, the number one complaint has it seemed like it's been the sidewalks. And now there's money that we can actually help with it. So I, I'm, I'm with Linda on this one. And I, I agree, too. I, I agree with Linda. So if I if I'm understanding correctly, then uh, the vote is for neither phase one nor phase two, but rather for sidewalks, the length of Sussex between Hodgden and uh, maybe Stage Street or maybe all the way down to Ritter. I mean that that that's uh, however, however many feet that is. That's fifty dollar a linear foot for for every foot of sidewalk. Um, I don't think it's going to be one hundred fifty three thousand, but it's going to be a good chunk. So you guys don't you guys just want to do sidewalk repair or replace that, whatever, or whatever, it, needs, whatever needs to happen? You know, you know, it's Linda's been on this and she's been on on council, but I've been bringing this up since ninety six. So it's I know, you know, and when we took the we took the <laughs> the engineers and the the county folks out there. And we started looking at the, you know, we went specifically to this sidewalk and the, the sidewalk folks and the engineers, their immediate question, their immediate comment was these sidewalks aren't that bad. They don't live here. And, well, I'm just saying, That's you know, right. like, that, like, like we were standing there and like, and I, I mean, the, the immediate comment was that these sidewalks aren't that bad. You know, there's there's more that we can do with this. You know, the, we can repair these sidewalks, but you know, it was I don't know. I have a question. Go ahead. The the, the grant it, are there specific things that we have to do with that money? Can it be used just for sidewalks? Does it have to be used for public safety? Like the reason that you're that that they're. Um, uh, saying that we need the the flashing lights and the bump outs and the and the island no i don't think we just need those flashing lights. I, I don't know the the sidewalk the, those flashing lights aren't like a mandatory thing the uh, the ada ramps are mandatory but we've are those are already done yeah i just i want okay. us to have as much impact as we can with the little bit of resources that we have and you know i i what i what if what i mentioned earlier is if we're constricted so much so that we can only use uh the money for certain things i would say go ahead and fix uh, uh do the work on phase one and start looking for money to do phase two because there's going to be more money that comes down the road. We just don't know how much and when it's going to be there. I would go along with that. I, I don't want to see a bunch of work done on those four corners and nothing done to those sidewalks. And I, I, I know, yeah. I know there's going to be a certain amount done to the sidewalks, but how far up on all four of those sidewalks from those corners? It, it, what, you know, that's that's what I'm concerned about. I would just as soon see phase one go through if that's what the, we can use the money for and then and then look for more money and no, more ways to get money to fix those sidewalks. sidewalks one one phase of revenue that we may be able to use and this is again counting counting chickens before they're hatched is the uh this tax money that we'll get from the subsidies. if we can take some of that or all of it for the first year or two and just put it off to the side and use it for that sidewalk that might work as well well and we we had said we were going to pass a trans transportation benefit district tax on the sales tax i mean that was really what we you know we had i we had, we had set out a goal to cre create that that uh you know street revenue portion and everything got kind of side railed by the 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 pandemic but i mean that if we're looking to generate our own money for streets and sidewalks that is the solution in my mind to and and that's what we set aside over time 
and use for that. But okay, uh, John, did you have a motion? Yeah, uh, I moved that uh, with phase one. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to uh, propose phase one uh, for the RCSP funds. Do we have any discussion? I think we beat it up already. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going through the motions. Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes, thank you. Uh, that brings us to item number 10. Now that the city has been awarded a creative district capital project pilot grant, the Arts Commission requires a contract between the city and the commission before any expenses can be reimbursed. The contract has been reviewed by the city attorney who notes nothing objectionable. A recommended action, move to authorize Mayor Fournier to enter the contract on behalf of the city. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes, thank you. Okay, that brings us to the, the hard one that I'm still trying to figure out what the best course of action might be. Uh, Washington Department of Commerce is the state agency through which the CARES Act funding is being administered. The department must cl close out all COVID-19 related contracts for the administration of CARES Act funding by October 31st, 2020. That's Friday, Saturday. And any entity entitled to those funds must submit for reimbursement by November 15th, 2020. As of October 19th, 2020, the city has approximately $60,000 remaining of its 82,000 funding allocation. The administration is engaged with neighboring jurisdictions as well as the Tonino Chamber of Commerce and the Thurston Eco Economic Development Council for ideas on how to expend the remaining funds. Three clear courses of actions uh, have been developed and the administration wishes the input of the city council uh, on which course of action to commit to with these funds prior to October 31st. So we need to make a decision tonight. Course of action A, the city will engage the Tonino Chamber of Commerce to act as the city's agent in identifying, vetting, awarding and distributing some portion of Tonino's CARES Act funding allocation. The chamber would receive approximately 10% of the total value claimed as their fee for performing the work. Course of action B, the city will engage the Thurston Economic Development Council to perform the same types of functions as described in course of action A. Course of action C, engage citizens and businesses to have those who can make a valid individual claim for relief, submit a request for relief, purchase common PPE for distribution to volunteer organizations and businesses who require it, uh, make a further contribution to Thurston County S TCSC's Food Bank Plus. So we have three potential courses of action. Uh, each one has the has its own uh, peril. The you know the the really uh, exciting one that we were we have been talking about. One of the two is is uh, or A or B, which would allow us to distribute the funds to businesses that are uh, struggling. Uh, the big issue is, you know, how do we, are we able to do that in th two, three days? Um, Linda, you uh, been uh, on this. It's my understanding that once that money is, uh, is like given to the economic development, there's an EDC that then that, that negates uh, October 31st. It will so be given if we right. obligate those funds right now to the EDC, then that uh, that that clock doesn't exist. Well, that's what my understanding is. Mr. Millard, you have any comments? Same, why would it not be the same giving it to the Tonano Chamber of Commerce? Uh, I believe that the EDC is probably more outfitted to. Um, yeah handle that money and take care of that money because they already have all of that in place for for other they, grants they, they've been doing and, it and, for and, you know, six, seven months already 
no, no, no. The, and, the and the chamber why, and about who would work with them. We would yeah, work the, with them. The question wasn't who would be better suited. The question is why would that clock not stop if we gave it to the Chamber of Commerce and kept it closed? Oh, it would. It would. Oh, it it it, it as long as the money is obligated to a source that can disperse it is my understanding. But John Millard? <laughs> that, it, it's a little more complicated than that, but I, that's the process very simply stated. Um, you, you know, there was a force option. We didn't show it to you. Uh, and the, the reason that we, you know, I personally, I guess, don't like any of these courses of action because we're going to leave money on the table. Uh, we were really looking hard to figure out a way to push this money out. And the way Linda describes the process is as close as we can come to it. If another, uh, you know, the beauty in the EDC and the chamber, they're the same thing, although the chamber operates under somebody else's uh, 501c3 charter is if we commit the money to that nonprofit agency and the nonprofit agency is doing the vetting to ensure that only those who are entitled to receive the funds because of COVID-19 are receiving the funds, then we have met our obligation and we could submit the request for reimbursement. Um, so it, yes, um, We'd have to enter agreement with the EDC. Hey, EDC, you're, you're Tonino's agent for this very particular thing, and we're, we're going to make up to $60,000 of CARES Act funding that was dedicated to Tonino to the EDC for disbursement to Tonino folks and businesses. You, you know, if we had been able to um, articulate a, a program like this, even at the first meeting in October, we could probably get it done. But, uh, you, you know, this so is- because of, So because of the, the time constraints, you're suggesting that uh, we take course of action B. I think the more we have the highest probability of like greater success with, with, with course B because the EDC, they're, yeah. they're already, in position to do this they're, they're they've got a gun that's ready to fire okay uh i have one other have suggestion and and this one here is really specific for us is to see what we can do for the food bank well, you're if absolutely you have that in course c but nowhere else and i think that should be moved up well again there are obviously you know, these are three courses of action that we sat around and thought up and, and are now presenting it to you. You're not limited. If if you want to do, you know, course of action B, accept that uh, before we tell the EDC we're going to give them some amount of money, we tell uh, Tonino Community Service Center that we're going to make a $10,000 donation specifically for the purchase of food or something like that. We We can do that. Okay, that's that's what my suggestion would be, and I'll make that motion that we uh, we we choose course B because of the EDC's expertise and and the ability to quickly move on this, and that uh, partial part of that money go to the TCSC first to the food bank, um, and whatever's left over go is uh, administered by uh, Plan B, the Economic Development Council. So, so what I'm hearing in your motion is is actually Plan D that we okay. will carve out of the of the sixty thousand dollars left. We will carve out ten thousand to give to Thurston County or to the Tenino Food Bank Plus. The remaining fifty thousand will be uh, given to the EDC for administration to businesses affected by COVID nineteen. Is that does that sound right, John? Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for using my voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we have a motion on the table. Option D uh, from Councilmember O'Callaghan. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, I'd like to open up for discussion. Do we have any discussion?
Hearing none, all those in favor? Oh, Linda? Aye. Oh. What? Did you have a comment? Yeah, the, I just wanted to just put a little bit of a fine point on there. Uh, this is sixty thousand dollars. We're taking ten of it for for the food bank. I, those those people are more directly attuned with a lot of the needs that are in Tonino, and I think that's money best spent. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Yeah, I think that was a very uh, a very good, elegant, wise solution. Thank you. That was that was good. We've been wrestling with that one. Uh, that brings us to reports. Chamber of Commerce, EDC, VCB. Uh, it's I, I think everybody probably knows that Shauna uh, submitted her letter of resignation. Uh, just the, a lot of changes in her in her life. Uh, she she wants to focus on home and focus on uh, the at home learning, building their house. Uh, her husband got a great new job, so she took this opportunity during the pandemic to uh, kind of walk away from her position as director of the VCB. I don't know what they're going to do. They're discussing. Uh, the board is discussing it right now, not right now, but amongst themselves on their direction. I think they're going to bring in a firm to kind of come in and talk to the board about what they want, where they're at. It's kind of hard to figure out because tourism, uh, you know, it's it's hard for them to figure out where solid ground is right now. So they're in a tough spot. Fire District 12. Uh, that much is going on. As the fire season down in California is done. We lost an engine. Uh, we lost one of our trucks, but it's all replaced through insurance from uh, the fire. Uh, but uh, I'm also part of the association, the Fire Commissioners Association, and I took some notes down. We had 19 people in attendance. We passed the budget. The budget is extremely small. Uh, we've got a brand new website, though. I haven't checked it out yet. Uh, for us, the department itself, we've got some new PPE uh, coming in. Uh, the heads up display is supposed to be better. The communication sound system was, is a lot clearer than it used to be. Uh, that's all grant money. Uh, uh, so I'm trying to smooth out issues. Okay, and uh, we're working on doing a levy lift because of all the new construction that's going on, it's spreading out the money, there's a lot of stuff that's left on the table for all the all the different uh, jurisdictions, not just ours. That's all of it in a nutshell. Thank you, sir. Museum. Uh, Tonino Community, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, I haven't really heard anything from the museum. Yeah. Tonino Community Service Center. Nobody in attendance. Arch Commission, nobody in attendance. Civil Service Commission. Uh, we meet in two weeks. Facade Improvement uh, Grant Review Committee. I I certainly hope we get to do something with it next year. Okay. Finance Committee. Nothing. Planning Commission. Next meeting is in two weeks. Public Safety Committee. Chief of Police, you already gave your report. You don't get a second one. Public Works already gave. City Planner, Building Official, City Attorney, Clerk Treasurer. John Millard, it is your turn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let me go down here. Uh, so uh, looking at the current budget status, I think it's most meaningful to look at the categories uh, to make an assessment of where we stand. Uh, so if you look at overall our funds, uh, Revenues lead expenditures, that, that's good, uh, but we're about 30% lower in our projections on both than we should be. I think that's the measure of COVID-19. Uh, now, with this respect to the general fund, um, 
you know, this is way skewed. What this is telling us is that we continue to expend money, you know, at a fairly regular clip. And, you know, if the target's 83% and we're at 92%, we're 10% we're ahead on uh, general fund expenditures. Uh, but but the good news is, and again, this, this is those uh, bolstering by the plan reviews and the building fees and all, all, all those unexpected things um, it, is keeping us revenues up in the general fund. And if those things that we are talking about come to be this next year, I think you'll see this exact same pattern uh, at the end of next year. The difference will be uh, that revenues will be um, may perhaps not leading expenditures, but certainly within just a few percentage points of that. So, um, you know, that that's what it is and what the future kind of looks like. Uh, we talked about this in the work session. Uh, as I explained, um, when we talk about the ad valorem taxes uh, th this year, this coming year, we we should be able to overcome the ill effects of district uh, of having to decrement our labor levy in favor of district 12 so that we stay within the statutorial statutorily mandated guidelines of uh, how much we can actually levy uh, the the grant situation is looking pretty darn good we got our first cares act uh, funding reimbursement um, the second one is in, they're looking at it, and that's where I derive these figures. Uh, we have just slightly less than 60,000 left to spend. Uh, you guys just gave me direction with how to uh, dispense with 10,000 of that real quick, and then the other 40,000 of that will go to the EDC. Um, as Mayor Fournier mentioned, we got the grant approved. We identified the project we're going to do, uh, and you have given us authority to enter this contract. So uh, we will start executing the capital pilot project, i.e., repave the parking lot, um, probably early spring, or I'm sorry, late spring, early summer th uh, this coming year. City Hall renovation project, um, you. We notified the contractor that he got the award. The contractor has now provided us with all the documentation required so that he can get started. And we're gonna meet with him this coming Thursday, although I don't have a time yet, and do the pre-construction meeting. We're gonna walk him around the building and uh, talk the details about what they're going to do for us, what city hall operations are gonna look like, You know, how much are they gonna be able to do around us working in place or will we have to displace and work from home or work from another location here in the city uh, that, that's a discussion we need to have sooner rather than later because uh, this is going to happen very quickly uh, the quarry uh, pool renovation project um, the contract here means the contract between the city and the county uh, because we had expected to finish the project this year we did not anticipate a, an entire year's delay uh, but we did and as you saw during director cannon's brief um, we're busy working uh, on the uh, stuff uh, that will help us get that uh, project completed and grant money expended the Corey House Grant, we're still waiting on Thurston County. Why are we waiting on Thurston County? Because Thurston County is in process of contacting all the neighboring jurisdictions to discover if anybody has a problem uh, with us re renovating the Corey House. Um, uh, we, we also talked about the water line uh, construction being complete and the reclaimed water line. It, it, I mean, you watched it. They're about 75% done with that thing. They just got to put dirt over can, it. Can you elaborate more on the calling all the other jurisdictions thing that you alluded to? Uh, elaborate on the what? You said that they're having to call the other jurisdictions to, oh. to ask about. For example, um, Coordinating with the Nisqually and Chehalis tribes 
uh, regarding wh what will what will we do? You know, what's the possibility of us encountering uh, an indigenous people gr uh, graveyard or, uh, you know, some artifact or heritage or cultural uh, item? How is that going to affect the work? What's our plan in the event that occurs? Or do they want to waive all of that stuff? So it's it's um, it's about following the process set down to ensure that um, once we set start turning shovels over, we got a plan in place uh, to either keep them turning over or let the appropriate people step in with when they need to. Uh, did that answer your question? Okay. Uh, so we're on track with the small city arterial grant program. Uh, that's the Ritter Street project that you guys saw a couple of months ago. Uh, Planner Penrose and I from the city met with mostly U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service personnel, but there's also a couple of um, state agency personnel in, in this meeting about the city of Tenino uh, putting a H, uh, the planning assistance grant to help us write the habitat conservation plan uh, for Tenino. And what we're being very careful about is we know the county uh, just is in process of developing their plan. So our biggest concern is that we stay in tune with the county's plan. So, you know, we don't want to compete with it. We want to complement it in any way we can. And both of those plans have to be complementary to the state's plans, uh, which the feds ultimately have to approve. Uh, we're getting a lot of help from the feds with this. They, they're really excited about Tonino doing this. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, the regional rural community support program grant, um, that is the paperwork to go with the project uh, that you just told us to execute uh, phase one. And the 2021 Heritage Grant, we submitted for $10,000 more for the caboose. And we're notified today that um, because we haven't expended the current grant funds and in fact asked for an extension that they granted us, we are ineligible for a grant in 2021. Now, there the staff is going to take a run at the Board of County Commissioners to see if they will grant an exception here because Tonino is not alone in this. Um, but under the current rules, they're, they're not inclined to give us an additional $10,000. So if you guys have any mojo with the Board of County Commissioners, uh, I would ask you to think about uh, having that conversation with them. And then uh, this is the revenue spreadsheet uh, I just, uh, prior to this meeting, updated this ad valorem tax. It's not last year plus, it's the uh, highest lawful levy, which is what we levied in 2017, 285, 842. Uh, that will be this year's levy again. Uh, so this was not a regular levy that was limited to 1% of last year's ad valorem tax. This was a highest lawful levy procedure that allows us to go back as far as 1985. Uh, in this case, we don't need to, we only need to go back to 2017, but uh, the 285, 842 um, is, is roughly what we are going to ask the county to collect for us this next year. Uh, so pending your question, that's my brief. Thank you, John. Uh, my report, everything I've done has been kind of sprinkled into this the whole meeting. Uh, be that? There's no report. CIP, Solid Waste Advisory, Steady, TCOM, Tonino School Board, no report. TRPC. Transportation Policy Board. I think I sent you guys the uh, the follow-up. If not, I'll get that out to you. 
Uh, do you want me to sit in for the last two months for uh, on uh, TRPC? Uh, yeah, if you'd like to, that'd be great. Okay, okay. because uh, they have a meeting, what, the 30th? I think, so. I don't know. I'll, I'll check on it. Uh, you might want to let them know, send them a note or something, an email. Because okay. I'm, I'm the uh, Alton down there anyway, aren't I? I believe so. Okay. Then we don't need to then just go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, public comment period number two. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to provide public comment, uh, please mic up and let us know. Going once, going twice. Any announcements? Yes, uh, I think I may have found a backdoor way to get information from uh, TCOM uh, because of the uh, Firefighters Association. Uh, it looks like I am probably am going to be the vice chair of the association, which gives, a, gives the city a little bit of a wiggle room to get in there to see what's going on possible. I haven't explored the whole thing yet. Okay. Any other announcements? Uh, I would like to announce that the holiday market is going to happen. It starts November 13th, Friday, from nine, uh, from 10 to 5, and it's going to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday every weekend until we get to the 16th, I believe it is, of December. And then it's going to be... It's going to be the 16th, 17th, and 18th will be the last day of the market. But it's going to be three days a week for the six weeks. And we've got 25, 26 great vendors that are going to be there. So everybody just come out and support them. Thank you. Oh, that's great. All right. That brings us to adjournment. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Non-debatable motion. Thanks, everybody. Well, See you on the flip side. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night.